Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different from my previous content as it's going to be more mechanically oriented than electrically oriented. So I watch a lot of those junkyard salvage videos on YouTube where the uh, people will go into a junkyard full of just really old rusty cars and they'll just pop the hood on one, throw some starter fluid down the intake of one of these cars, and for some reason, magically, they almost always crank over and fire right up, even if they've been out in the rain and the dirt for, you know, 40 years or more. So I want to do my own version of this. I have here a uh, really old, uh, kind of somewhat rusty, 36 horsepower VW air-cooled engine. This is a 1200cc 1959-era engine, and I want to see if I can actually get it running using pretty much the parts that it came with. So all the original cylinders, all the original pistons, original heads, um, push rods, and uh, whatever is in the case here. And I have ordered a few uh, additional parts that I'm going to need uh, because they weren't available for it. So I did order a uh, distributor cap. I ordered a new oil cleaner screen. I, oil, I uh, ordered a clutch pack for the flywheel, uh, among other things like a uh, seal and gasket set for the entire case, since I will be cracking the case. Really, the goal here is ultimately going to be, can I get this to first off even uh, turn over smoothly, since right now it does turn, but it's really very stiff. In fact, I can't turn it by hand. I need to use the wrench to turn it. So it's uh, actually really not in great condition right now, but I think if I do some lubrication and some uh, cleaning on the internals, I might be able to get it moving smoothly enough that once we put some starter fluid into it, we might actually get this thing to fire over. So as you can see, there's definitely a lot of nasty stuff in this engine. It's going to need a very thorough cleaning before it's going to be anywhere close to being ready to run. So there's the cover off. And this is what an oil pump looks like in a Volkswagen air-cooled engine. It's basically two uh, interlocked gears. It's a type of gear pump. In order to get better access to the oil pump, in order to remove it so we can crack the case, I've actually connected a bearing puller to the front, uh, the front pulley, which I'm going to be pulling off of the engine. Now this pulley is originally attached using a threaded bolt or a threaded nut, which I removed fairly easily just by using a breaker bar. Uh, but what I need to do is actually get the pulley off of the crankshaft. And now you should be able to just get the pulley right off. So there's our crank pulley. There's a keyway here and I believe the key is actually fused into the crankshaft so we don't have to worry about removing that or keeping track of it. So I'm going to move these aside and I'm going to keep them with the other oil pump parts.
So it turns out you actually have to remove the pistons in order to get them to clear all the way through the crankcase. Now what they recommend doing is, as you're heating it, you want to avoid heating the wrist pin itself, only heat the surrounding piston. And they say when the whole thing starts to smoke, that means it's hot enough to start uh, drifting the uh, connecting or the wrist pin out. In fact, this is actually pretty much ready to come off as it is, but if you hold one side of the engine, you should be able to just slip the crank, half the crankcase, right off of this thing. In this case, I'll stand it up on its end. Now be careful that you don't drop the crankcase. Sometimes some of the bolts can be a bit recalcitrant. So I'm going to set it back down here. And pretty much we got a separate now we got a separate crankcase. As I suspected, it's completely filled with plant matter, oil scum, and all kinds of debris. This one is really like pretty much welded up. I mean, I can get it to move if I bash on it with the hammer, but that's like almost just seized, it up, seized up on the rod. All right, so I fully removed the uh, crankshaft. I've left all the connecting rods attached to it. And I squirted some uh, penetrating oil into all of these, uh, all of these bearing journals and bearings where the connecting rods meet the crankshaft, and now they're all moving pretty freely. So I just got back from taking this engine to the car wash and blasting it out with the pressure washer. You can see I've removed a lot of the debris at the bottom and throughout the engine. It's definitely not perfect though. There's still a lot of uh, grime and oil crud and a little bit of dirt on the inside of it. So I'll be cleaning that up with some uh, acetone and some uh, like a Scotch-Brite pad, as well as some paper towels uh, in short order. But it is definitely much better and the large debris has now been removed from the engine case. So I'm going to get started with cleaning up the inside of the engine with some solvent. And uh, then I'll be able to proceed on to the uh, lubrication and reassembly of this case.